nothing nothing wakes you up in the morning <coughs> quite like getting gassed Um, yeah, we're rolling out the knife on some NH3 and Hydrus here. Um, it's been a hectic morning trying to get this rig ready to roll. Uh, I'm done passing now, you can't see it, but the planters are sitting out. They are heading out to plant today. Um, we got we got a couple tractors working ground right now. And they're heading out to spray, so yeah, it is it is officially plant 2023. Okay, made it to our field. So up on this bar, it's got like automatic wing locks right here. So we gotta pop this up and throw that down in the way. So it blocks it, so then that can just pop over. You gotta do that on both sides, every time you fold it, which kinda stinks. Maybe I can take them off. I mean, who needs wing locks anyways? Luckily, we made it down here. It wasn't that bad, really. Most cars kinda got out of my way, so you pop that up, throw that like that. Let me make sure on my... Uh, yeah, we look ready to go. Yeah, we're good shape. Got the big, big power here. Oh! So, I didn't show much of running the bar. I did probably 30 acres down there, 40 acres. It's getting close to needing a, a tank switched. But uh, I had someone come over and take over for me. They are currently running the bar I was running. And I'm on my way back to the shop. I'm gonna get the other anhydrous bar, the other 60 foot bar, hooked up to, um, I guess the 500 row track that I, that I plant with. Uh, we'll get it hooked up to that and I'll get it running. And, um, I'll just start it there on my home farm, uh, not my home farm, but the shop farm, our shop, get it started there, and uh, yeah, which I think my brother is going to be running it, and I don't think he's ever really been around in hydrus, so it might take me a minute to get him uh, up to speed on how, how actually dangerous knifing in hydrus is, and yeah, that's, that's something you need to respect at all times, or, or stuff could get pretty bad pretty fast, so we'll get him set up. He'll be good shape. Okay, so here's the deal. Oh, the sun is terrible behind me. Anyways, here's the deal. I did not get finished on the farm I was at yesterday. Uh, we just got a little bit around the ends to do, and my tank ran dry. So, they down here of the tank for me this morning yesterday I did not film a bunch because it was just like absolute madness So I was doubling back across something I knifed yesterday just because that was around where I wore, ran out. Okay, I thought I blew more than, or broke one more, more than one breakout bolt. But uh, I was doubling back across something because that's where I ran out yesterday and I broke a breakout bolt, which is kind of weird to break a breakout bolt. It's like you're going across something that you've already done. Oh, sweet. It uh tore the vapor side hose there, which that's no big deal. You can just 
extend that a little bit longer. Um, hold on a sec, we'll get you guys fit up here. All right, maybe you can see, maybe you can't. I don't know. It'll all come out in the wash. Maybe loosen this one up so I can rotate that back. You always want to be careful when you're break a breakout bolt because a lot of times it'll bend this hose at like whoo this stuff is hanging this morning it's kind of burning why is the air spicy son of a gun where's my breaker bar alright look at that fit up Nothing, nothing wakes you up in the morning <coughs> quite like getting gassed. Screw that on. There's my wrenches. I did not bring a screwdriver out, but as you can see, my vapor side is torn there. So I'll loosen this up, pop that off, and then uh, we'll cut it and pop it back on. All right, so the other day I, I was I was filming, and um, I think I think we were not even in Hydrosan. I was thinking, you know, from here on it's gonna be pretty smooth sailing because we already got the first day under our belt and boy was I wrong because that day was yesterday I think and yesterday we had a planer get stuck I had to take the track out and how big it and stuff um, dad had to hang out with the corn planters all day because the McKinsey planters just were not having it they're running now though they're running great shape now uh, yesterday I got my planter and tractor unhooked from the anhydrous bar. Went to hook it up to my planter, it was all good and everything. Brought it out to the field and it did not want to plant. I hung out with it for probably six hours in the field last night trying to get it to plant. Didn't work. Finally gave up. Ran home. Ran home. You know, went to sleep. Come out this morning. Come out here, sat on the phone for three, four, Three, four, five hours, I don't know, something like that. Talking with people from Precision, trying to get it to run, which it's not running the best because it's still yelling at me sometimes for no reason, but it, it is planting now, so that's a plus. That's planting. So, smooth sailing, sailing from here on out, I hope. The thing about these red planters is they take forever to raise they are they are behemoths to say the least so they take forever to raise but other than that they're pretty awesome when they run when you get these big new planters that just don't want to run it's it, it makes you dang near sick it's like i wish i was running the ground drive 3700 right now which we got one, so I guess I could have been. So, so uh, it'll probably be pulled out of the shop here in a little bit, and he'll start helping me plant beans. But, geez, old Pete. So we need some seed here. Crank that up. Need some seed. We were running out on the last pass here. Um. Some of you that's been following along for a while, seen a lot of the process of us building this seed truck. Um, I think this is the second year we've had it. So we just took a 540 J&M gravity bed wagon, took it off the running gear, threw it on the truck, 
pretty sweet seed seed rig because um, we got death on it, we got fuel on it, we got a huge fuel tank on it. Actually, that fuel tank's huge, and we run it on a two-inch Honda pump, so you can pump a lot of fuel in a hurry. Not as fancy as some of them seed buggies you see, but it gets the job done. I'm gonna pull up a little bit. I think I'm just a little bit. All right, you're right there. It's not as fancy as some of them uh, real fancy seed buggies you see, but I mean, it gets the job done for us. And one thing I really wanted is uh, it to carry fuel. Turn the PTO on. Open this up. But one thing I wanted is depth and fuel because I was carrying that in the bed of my pickup truck. And after I was carrying that on my pickup, I didn't have room for nothing else. So, yeah, it's pretty sweet. We're pumping the fuel with the two inch Honda pump. Pump a whole lot of fuel and not much time. So, I, I like just it being a one stop deal, you know? You pull up, you need some seed, you need some depth. You got it all right here. We got it fit up with lights all the way around it and stuff, so, you know, you real crazy people that like planting super late at night, that's me. It's all set up for that. And it's way, way bigger than the seat truck that uh, we had before. With two 60-foot planters going, it only needs filled, but once a day or something like that. So it's pretty awesome. the planter the sprayer guy is on our butt we're gonna have to uh, start making better timing because he's gonna be waiting on us which I guess as long as we get the stuff planted it don't matter if he gets a little ahead of us but I don't know if you guys saw it you guys were not with us at that point in time but we got the other 60 foot planter planting beans here rolling across some acres here he is the old the old ground drive 3700 is just getting with it here so that's good that's good gotta say when this fancy stuff wasn't on the run that planter was looking awfully nice Maybe I should have videotaped more of that experience, but um, I had a solid feeling that if I was trying to videotape it and trying to work on it, with the mood I was in, my camera probably would have got thrown in a tree line somewhere. So, especially we didn't. So I had a bunch more footage of today, planting and that stuff. But I don't know what happened to it. The audio was all messed up and it didn't it didn't have any audio. So that is useless. But uh yeah. We're on our way home now, done park the planters. I was rolling out here to see the speed disc, but uh, they're stopping, so they probably think I want something here. But I just, I just wanted to see them roll. It's absolutely wild just to see 
these things running across the field and how fast they're actually able to go and how nice of a job they do at high speeds. Look at this thing. And one of them suckers is pretty wild because it'll it'll pull a 620 to its knees and if you got her sunk in there pretty deep, which that one's not sunk in very deep. We're just trying to scratch the top, get it airing out a little bit. So it's not sunk in wild. They could roll dang near as fast as they wanted to. But back in the fall when we were working corn stocks, we had them sunk in deep and 10 mile an hour was everything the 620 had. Uh, I mean, pulling a 40 foot speed disc. So, pretty wild tools. But that's about all we got for today. So, if you like this video and you want to see more like this video, uh, maybe subscribe. But we'll see you in the next one.